Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episodes 5 and 6, Fluttershy Leans In and Forever Philly. And a quick programming note. We're probably going to go back to single episode recordings for this, mainly because one of Canada's broadcast stations that broadcasts My Little Pony is going crazy. <laughs> doing double episodes every week. And we thought the U.S. was also going to be doing double episodes, so we were planning on following the same format. But even though technically the episodes are available because Canada's putting them out at an accelerated rate, we're in the U.S., so we're going to try to be somewhat legitimate and watch and record on the U.S. schedule. Mm-hmm. Because we actually enjoy watching it through legal means through their actual app. Because it's surprisingly easy. Chromecast to the TV. Boom! Very simple. And yes, Lux has a Chromecast. You got it for free somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't steal it. Don't look at me that way. I won it through a contest. <laughs> right. Don't make them think those kind of thoughts about me. I'm a very nice man. Uh, so, the first episode on our list, Fluttershy leans in. Yes, all of those lessons about confidence and being more assertive really paid off for Fluttershy. We actually came across a quote that uh, summed up this episode rather well. Steve Jobs, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your inner voice. Yeah, it was completely by accident. Who knew enjoying a cup of tea could be so informative? <laughs> and relevant. Ah, <laughs> uh, so it was a nice episode. We didn't see where it was going. You had a theory at one point. Well, I was wondering if Fluttershy's idea really wasn't going to work and if what Hard Hat was building would end up being an expanded hospital for the veterinary pony. Mm-hmm, because her building did seem kind of small. Quite small. Now that she has a recovery area for the animals, it really is like she has an expanded hospital. Yes, well, the problem seemed to be that the patients were checking in, but not checking back out. Like Hotel California. <laughs> Except much safer. Yes, they didn't need to stab the beast with their steely knives. Yes, and it wasn't the whole, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Quoting songs, check! Yeah, so I thought maybe, you know, because she was so focused on this vision and because she wasn't taking the advice of these so-called experts that Fluttershy might end up being in the wrong. I didn't want that for her, but I wondered if that was the way it was going to go. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure about that. I was like, well, would she actually stand up to the experts other than just firing them? Or would she actually tell them like, no, this is the way you have to do it. And they would actually, they would actually learn a lesson. Not Fluttershy. Yeah. Uh, I see why the authors brought in the secondary experts. Because it would have been much more difficult for Fluttershy to have to have done that with her inner circle of friends. And the, the experts weren't really wrong. It's just they're used to working with a different clientele. And they're experts in a field that really doesn't help her because they've never had experience in any of those things before. She wanted a very natural environment, a very open environment, something more akin to what a zoo would have. So an expert from a zoo would have been better because they're used to making environments that imitate or work with a natural environment. Yes. And by zoo, you mean the more modern zoos that try to create habitats, not the older ones where everybody's in a cage. Yeah. I'm talking about the ones that spend lots and lots of money on research to simulate environments where the animals naturally live and make the enclosures as big as they can. Yes, because that was really what Fluttershy was going for. But what I don't understand with the sanctuary, yes, you have everything there that the animals need, but without any type of wall, what is keeping apex predators from coming in to this section? Where is it situated that we aren't going to have a timber wolf problem? Yeah, but if you also look at it, a lot of the animals that were allowed in were also apex predators. And there were a lot of high-level prey as well. 
Yes. So first, the amazement that they're all getting along without being directly supervised by Fluttershy or the veterinarian. Just a little bit of a lesson of putting your trust in the right people. I mean, that was kind of difficult because these were all ponies that the members of the main six who recommended them had had good experience with. Mm hmm. Just not the experience that Fluttershy actually needed. It made the suggestions made sense, but the people who were recommended had experience in just the wrong area of what they are experts in. The construction pony obviously was good at construction, but he was good at construction from already made plans. People would give him plans, specifically blueprints, and he's really good at making the blueprints come alive. And not just that, what Fluttershy was looking at constructing wasn't really construction in a traditional sense. While they did need to do some building and arranging, it wasn't traditional construction. And while they did need cushions and pillows and stuff, apparently, I don't know how you're going to keep those clean out in the wilderness with the rain and everything, but hey. Well, if it's made out of the right material, it will keep clean on its own and the rain will naturally wash it for you. The only thing you really have to worry about is sun rot. So it was just the wrong matchup and the experts were so used to being experts that they wouldn't listen to Fluttershy. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't cooperate with her and use her ideas along with their ideas. Because there could have been a nice blending there and it was unfortunate that there wasn't. And that was the test for Fluttershy that no one was seeing her vision. She's trying to articulate this, she has a whole board and she's saying what she wants, but no one's understanding the way she's saying it. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting how they did sum up the lesson at the end of the episode because it was kind of vague up until that point. But I even leaned over to Amber and go, yeah, that's a lesson right there, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. And they really, I think they kind of needed to state it at the end. I mean, once it was stated, it was obvious but there were so many other paths that it could go and it was kind of muddy along the way mm -hmm. and they really did an assertive fluttershy well in this episode it was less iron will fluttershy and more of i'm confident i know what i want this is what i want this is my dream i believe in it and i'm not going to let you dissuade me so it was basically iron will fluttershy without the rudeness which is much better and then when she said she was calling in an expert i didn't think of Daddy McColt, my first thought was Tree Hugger, and I was like, how is that going to work? Because Tree Hugger knows animals. She doesn't necessarily know construction. At one point I thought Discord for a brief second, because he could like snap his fingers and there it is. I thought that too for half a second, but I'm like, no, we can't trust Discord to do this. Basically the same thing. Just it was in my head for a second, I was like, no, it's not gonna be Discord, especially since Fluttershy hasn't really known him that long. She said an old friend. Discord's more like a new friend, though I would also consider this guy not an old friend. Technically he's old, but... Yes, and Fluttershy met and befriended Discord way before they met the Hooffields and McColts. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you haven't noticed yet, that's the picture I'm going with. I actually drew this picture for the Hooffield McColts episode. Now I'm coloring it in. Enjoy! Uh, so it was nice to see, you know, her dream come together and that's a lot of story progression for Fluttershy but I still want to know how that tire swing is staying in place. Nothing is securing that log. Yeah! When I first saw Pinkie might push the log into place I was like oh she's gonna put a boulder on it or something. Aww, how is she? I can understand she swinging from it but how is the... How is anyone else using that safely? What is the physics behind this? I know it's a cartoon show. But, you know, they were doing other constructing, securing and tying other things in place, so... Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, any nitpicks to go over? I should say any more nitpicks to go over? Uh, parkour, really? Yeah. I was trying to figure, I was like, is he doing parkour, or...? Well, he was doing parkour, but they were using parkour, because there was a competition, a parkour competition, which would be for... Animals, which was what he was training for, and I'm just like, God, parkour is so front and center, I swear. It's like, everything I'm into is popular after I'm not really doing it anymore. I still love parkour, there's just not a safe school nearby. Yes, I know you can do parkour anywhere. I'm not that good. 
I prefer the the safety confines of a course. Mm-hmm. Not that good, she says. Where was the time she's done some neat stuff right in front of them, and he's like, huh? Well, compared to my instructors, I am a total novice. Mm, that's a good point. I've seen them do some amazing things. Mm -hmm. So it was fun to see. I'm like, really? Par parkour. This, this is so mainstream now that it's in a children's show. Anything else? Or should we move on to Forever Philly? Well, let's go on to Forever Philly. This was a very pleasant episode. And I don't know why, because I've never really experienced the events. But it felt like it hit very close to home. And it felt nice. Like, I get this. I understand this. I think it's because I've been rem reminiscing about stuff back in college. Yeah. Well, people change and grow up. And it's not just the course of growing up. People continue to grow and change after they reach adulthood. So there were several layers here. Quality time with family, the, you know, work-life balance, because Rarity hadn't seen Sweetie Belle in forever. I'd also like to mention this is one of those plots where I saw where it was going, but I enjoyed the ride, so I didn't care. Pretty much. This was a much clearer path than Fluttershy leans in. It doesn't make it bad. It just means, oh, yeah, we know where this is going. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the part with uh, Zipper Will, because that's not a puppy. Mm. That's a dog. Yeah, only at the beginning was where I was like, what are they going with this because Rarity's so calm and everything everything's going fine something's going to break is it going to be those things in the back and then the photo I went I know where we're going with this especially when the episode actually started and she starts harping on oh all these things we used to love to do I'm gonna go and see my sister and she'll be so happy and I'm like that is where it's going to backfire yes well just the fact that she was going to go see Sweetie Belle I'm like Sweetie Belle has a life and responsibilities now. She's not the same little filly that you were forced to babysit while your parents went out of town. She's not the same pony who burned breakfast and used all your best jewels for a picture and reorganized your design room and did the sister who's social with you. Mm -hmm. She now basically has a job. Especially since there doesn't seem to be any currency in this world, I say it's actually a job job. Well, you could say that, except that there are bits, which we see change hands. Also, Rarity constantly pays in gemstones, even in this episode, because she slipped that gem under the owner's hat. Yeah, so how do people make a living and stuff like that? I know Rarity like has this job and everything, but we never see anyone really pay her. We just have clients come in. Well, the transaction of money between hands isn't necessarily the interesting part, so for the most part, they probably don't bother to take up airtime with it. Mm -hmm. So do the CMC get paid now? It doesn't seem like it. I mean, we saw them get paid in the past, but that was by Spike for pet sitting. For the most part, we don't see money change hands unless we're very much doing a commercial transaction. Because we don't even see Twilight pay for all of those apology treats. But you know she had to. Yeah. Like, how do these places stay open? How do you get supplies? Especially the mints. And I love how Rarity thought everything was so cute. Like, it was pretend at first, and then she realizes, oh! My sister is actually doing important work. Yeah, she has her cutie mark. She knows what she's good at. And she's following that dream. You weren't much older than her when you found that those gemstones. And you realized fashion was your passion. Yes. Also, Chip was very cute. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he's a chip off the old block. Boy. <laughs> also, did he, like, hit on the CMC? <laughs> uh, that his inspiration for the block was creating a sculpture of them? Mm -hmm. I was like, is he going to sculpt it into a dragon? Because he says that all his lunches always say dragon to him. Mm, yeah, I thought it was going to be a dragon at first, and then, oh! <laughs> wow, that's really kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. Also, that's kind of cool for the CMC. This colt got his cutie mark by making a sculpture of us. Mm -hmm. you know, and it was a nice touch, all the photos on the wall of all the different people that they've helped. And I just remember what I lost there. The classic trope of after you're done sculpting something, it looks like you've done nothing until you tap it. <laughs> yes. Which is fun. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure how plausible that actually is, but depending on how you make the cuts, it could theoretically make sense. Also, how does he know to use the how to use those tools? Yeah, maybe he's had experience with it in the past, but he never really had a chance to really do anything. Yeah, or maybe it was more um, traditional stonemason work rather than sculpting. Hmm. You know, cutting and shaping blocks would give him the understanding of the tools, but wouldn't allow him to explore the creativity. His parents may actually work in the stone industry. Quite possible, because he certainly had the goggles and other appropriate equipment very quick to hand, because I didn't see the CMC provide those, only the block and the tools. So yeah, this is a very sweet episode. And I don't mean that as a pun, but it works. It does. And I mean, there can be some fun of, you know, going back and doing retro things that you used to do. But when you're presenting it as, oh, yes, this is what you love. No, I'm more into this. And no, I'd rather have a salad. Really? You'd rather have a salad over ice cream. Yeah. I like how her sister was like, oh, how so practical of you. Like, when did you get so practical? And I'm like, yeah. That would kind of be me, but I'd be like, well, for a treat, we could have ice cream because you're just here for the one day. But yeah, I would pick the salad. Being herbivores, they can't go pick the hamburger. Yeah, and I like how she's, they also bring up that trope of like, I remember this being bigger. It would be if you were a little filly. Yes. Though that was even small for a filly. Quite, but it was very adorable. Mm-hmm. Like that, that was a very nice bite of... <laughs> Still a little hungry, though. Oh, well, I guess I could go for another scoop. I meant an actual scoop, but okay, one more of these. I like how Rarity, like, bribed original owner out of retirement. Mm-hmm. It's like, that kind of tells you how long ago this might have been, Rarity, that the original owner retired since the last time you came. Though one can retire at any point, mm -hmm. and who knows how long... The pony had been in the business beforehand, but still, it just drove home how long ago this was. It's not like she doesn't like ice cream. We've seen the CMC get milkshakes. Mm-hmm. During that wonderful song with Babs. Yes. And I like how they're using the CMC as a vehicle to grow up with the audience that probably started watching them during season one. Yes, because they're able to age up more than the main six, who, you know, were already adult level at the beginning of the series while they're still growing and changing the cmc is more of a vehicle for the growing pains that youth tend to go through mm -hmm. and they're using them very smartly and they're not being the classic cmc that we saw in season one no because they've also grown and changed they're, they spent all this time trying to figure out their place in the world they found their place and then we have episodes of them trying to deal with the fact that oh We've found it, now what? And they're working their way through that of, okay, so how do we make this work? And what do we do when we're not actively doing this work? Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is they seem to be like not really having one single leader of the CMC. Every time they have an episode that focuses on, on one of them, that particular one is taking the lead over the others. Like, Last season, it was Apple Bloom leading the CMC. This particular episode, it was Sweetie Belle. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about it, they all basically have the same cutie mark. So on that level, they would technically all be equal and not Starlight Glimmer's Creepy Village equal, but actually equal in that they all have an aptitude for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So any nitpicks of this episode? Uh, the usual rarities mascara running. There just must not be waterproof mascara in Equestria. She yeah. is too much of a fashionista to have that happen. I understand it for a fact. And people would probably be complaining the other direction going, it's not realistic for her mascara not to run. Trust me, waterproof mascara. This is why they have cleansing cloths to wash it off. Because you can't wash it off with water like older mascaras and stuff. No, you use a special makeup remover to get it off but at least you don't end up looking like somebody punched you in the face. And just also the transition, Rarity being so calm, and her assistant calming down, and then the total reversal. I thought that it was going to be something about the shop, 
where she finally got her assistant calmed down and then Rarity realizes they forgot something and freak out. But like she said, it wasn't something, it was someone. Mm-hmm. And that joke actually hit very nicely at the beginning. I can order more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also a nice comment from her assistant of, oh, that was a quick turnaround. Mm-hmm. Because it looked like she'd been crying, like, constantly. Yeah, and also brings up the question of, who's managing the other shop? Because I completely forgot Rarity is actually managing three shops now. Yes. We know she has several staff members for the Manhattan one, but we didn't see that Rainbow Dash hired a manager. So is that location working without a manager, or is there a manager that we didn't meet? Or will they Shanghai one into another, into a future episode? Possible, because Rarity's still managing the Ponyville one, mm -hmm. and her assistant is the manager for the Canterlot location. I mean, that was a whole episode. Mm -hmm. And then we had a whole episode for the Manhattan one, technically two, one finding the location and one doing the opening. But we didn't focus on a manager that time. We have at least three staff members because that's how many Rainbow Dash hired. Hmm. Well, they'll probably use it in the future episode and we'll go, this is a retcon! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, either that or each location is handled slightly differently because they're different sizes. As we don't see the assistant having a staff. So the Candlelot location looks like it's run exclusively by her. And I keep saying assistant because I forgot her name. Yeah, I can't remember her name either. And I don't think it was said at the beginning of the episode. So no refresher there. <laughs> no, but God, all those silly photos. That could have been fun if it had been an agreed upon thing. Because you're never too old to take silly photos. Nope. The internet proves this every day. Yes. But nice lesson. I don't have that many nitpicks other than, really? You're letting her take off from this job? You made a commitment to a client. That's shirking responsibility right there. Well, the other two thought they could handle it because there are a pair of three. One of them should be able to go off if something comes up. True. But after you had just promise the client and all of this happens in front of your client very unprofessional yeah but you know it was all a setup for the joke it was all a setup for the joke I uh, still yeah i almost expected rarity to be at the door when she opened it up and goes hmm? i was very much expecting that i also like how sweetie bell seems to be the manager of time and stuff like that for the cmc yes because she had the schedule down and she knew when zipper well was going to show up and she had it down perfectly that's the thing while they all have and apparently equal aptitude for their cutie mark ability, they all have different strengths and skills. Which is why you needed all three of them. Though Sweetie Belle might not have seen the problem so clearly if she hadn't been stuck with her sister going through the same problem. I also liked your reaction when the filly picked up the stick and threw it back after the dog brought it back. Ew! <laughs> I mean, I know all of them were mouthing the toys to some degree, but first the stick was out in the woods, then it was in Rarity's mane, then it was on the ground, mm -hmm. then it was thrown, so then it was in the dog's mouth. I guess these ponies have a magical immune system. Apparently. Specifically earth ponies most likely, because they pick up everything with their mouths, and sometimes hooves. Still trying to figure that one out. Um, earth pony magic? We'll go with that. That's what we'll go with. Or equestrian magic physics don't question or cat girls die. Yeah. So shall we wrap this up? Mm -hmm. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed both episodes. The second one was nice and sweet and it brought some nice memories back. The first one was nice, especially since we were like, hmm, what is the lesson going to be in this episode? And we got it at the end. We also found that opportune quote. <laughs> uh, so yeah, enjoyed both episodes. Yes, definitely enjoyed both. Five felt a little muddled, but, you know, that actually works quite well. Everything doesn't have to be clear, cut, and dry straight to the formula. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice that they can have different pathways and different ways that an episode could go. And it's also nice that they can still take a formula like episode six and still have it come out nice. Mm -hmm. It flowed very well. It was very smooth. Hmm. Quite enjoyable. Except now I want a giant sundae. Yeah. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, 
Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episodes 5 and 6, Fluttershy Leans In, and Forever Philly. Reminder, after this, we're going back to one episode per recording. Thanks for listening. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, check out other videos. We've put together a few playlists for you. They'll pick a topic, click a playlist. If you'd like to see more of Lux's art, you can check him out on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, and, oh yeah, Facebook. That, that's still a thing, right? If you'd like to support this channel financially, check out the links for Patreon and Ko-fi. First, let's go to Do Not Disturb. <laughs> right next to my head. <laughs>